Hi dear students, a warm good morning to all of you and let's continue with microscopy. You know what is a microscope and what is it being used for? But what is a good microscope or how do you get a, a good microscope? We need to know. Always we should choose microscopes. We should have good resolution. What is good resolution? Good resolution is the ability to distinguish uh, two closely associated points as two separate entities. If the sh it is the shortest distance, okay, between two objects, which we can dis objects or points which we observe and which we can uh, distinguish or uh, identify as two separate points. Now, in the case of human aided eye. Uh, it is being considered to be about 0.2 millimeter or 200 micrometer. Only those two points which are separate from each other by 0.2 millimeter can be viewed as two different points for human eye. But if you go to a light microscope, this distance is about 0.2 micrometer. And uh, so that is a little more closer. That is, you will be able to distinguish points even which have been found to be very closer with the help of a light microscope. And in the case of an electron microscope, this distance is about 0.5 nanometer. So, smaller the resolution, okay, or the limit of resolution, the, good, the more good the microscope becomes. Then, the second point of a microscope is that it should have a good contrast. That is, from the surroundings, the specimen which we are reviewing or different parts of a specimen should give us contrast so that we would be able to view uh, different parts of the uh, specimen in a better way. Then, of course, magnification plays an important role. The greater the magnification, uh, the clearer or the more uh, easy it becomes to make uh, interpretations on your specimen. So, these are the three uh, criteria which we choose to whether a microscope is good or not. Now let's move on and we are continuing with uh, different types of microscopes. The first one which we have to say is a simple microscope. A simple microscope uh, is a microscope which they uses a single objective, a, a single type of lens, okay, not objective, a single type of lens rather than using a combination of lenses. It usually works on the principle when a tiny object is placed within its focus, a virtual, virtual erect and magnified image of the object is formed at least at the least distance of the distinct vision from the eye held close to the lens. So different forms of a single microscope are available. Now when you use a magnifying lens also you are using only one single lens that is an example of a simple microscope and even if you use a microscope which is having a single lens then it is also being considered to be as a simple microscope. So when you use single lens it is called simple microscope and when you use a combination of lenses you call it as a compound microscope. So a simple microscope is one that uses a single lens for magnification such as a magnifying glass and it uses a lens to enlarge an object through an angular magnification alone, giving the viewer an erect virtual enlarged image. And uh, the use of single convex lens or a group of lens is found in single magnification devices such as magnifying glass, lupus and uh, the eyepiece for telescopes and microscopes. So, in the eyepiece, if you go to look of the telescope and microscope, you are using only a single lens. And uh, usually, it is a convex lens of small focal length, which is used for seeing the magnified images of the small objects. Now, if you go to look into the compound microscope, it uses multiple lenses to magnify an image for an observer. And it has, it is usually made up of uh, two convex lenses. Uh, now, the first ocular lens which is close to the eyes and the second is the objective lens. The compound microscopes are uh, usually been found to be larger and heavier and more expensive than the single microscope because uh, multiple lenses are being used but uh, 
it has various advantages that is the chromatic aberrations will be reduced and uh, ex the exchangeable objective lenses to adjust the magnification now this is the most commonly used microscope the compound microscope which you have here now you you can see here you have a objective uh, you have a eyepiece lens over here you have a objective lens and then towards here you can see also you have a condenser lens so in this type of this is a type of compound microscope where you are using multiple combinations or different combinations of what different lenses to get a magnified image so that is the case of a compound microscope in a simple microscope you use only a single lens but in a compound microscope you use a combination of lenses so let's explore the parts of a compound microscope as the picture implies the topmost one is the ocular lens and uh, usually it is of uh, it provides a mag magnification of about uh, 10x but there are certain other modifications also uh, sometimes it will be 5x also so eyepiece is also called the ocular lens and usually 10x is a one and you might get a magnification or the of 5x or 30x depends upon the microscope then you have the eyepiece tube which is the eyepiece tube over here you can have a look this is a tube called the eyepiece tube now what does this eyepiece tube do it's just a eyepiece holder it carries the eyepiece just above the objective lens now what is the objective lens these are the major lenses used for the specimen visualization and you can see that they have a modification they have a magnifications of about uh, from for like you have 10x sometimes you have 40x normally it is 40x to 100x okay so these are the objective lens and it is here that you keep the specimen so just above the specimen you have the objective lens and the objective lens is attached to a nose piece and the nose piece can be rotated in such a way that you can choose which type of objective lens you need and as the magnification of the objective lens increases the better the image becomes or the easier it becomes because the image becomes magnified and uh, of course we spoke about the nose piece and uh, we have the adjustment knobs adjustment knobs are used to focus the microscope now where are they these are the adjustment knobs you have the coarse knob as well as the fine adjustment uh, the coarse is the one which you need to focus then after that the fine is to adjust uh, like a slight adjustment might be needed uh, for different people uh, based upon their eye variations so based upon that you will use a uh, different knobs to uh, to check or to focus it to focus the uh, what the image on the on uh, the focus your viewing on the specimen so that you get a better clear image now coming to the next parts we have the stage the aperture and the microscopic illuminator and the condenser now what is the stage the stage is a place where you keep your particular specimen and uh, this stage can be moved in uh, it depends upon the microscope of course but most of the microscope you can move it in horizontally as well as vertically to some extent in both the directions in the x like this way as well as this way sometimes you might be able to move it up to a particular limit to adjust the view in different viewing different parts of the specimen now the next one what we have is the aperture now what is the aperture so you can see at the middle of the stage there will be a small hole over here through which the light can be passed from the down and that is called the aperture aperture of the microscope and below the light of course there would be a light source now here there is a light source which is uh, uh, electrically provided or uh, electrically this is a electrically supported uh, microscope and so you will have a power supply and a light source is over here but sometimes you can also have a mirror over here 
with which you can adjust your light uh, and focus your light onto it. So that's about the microscopic illuminator and uh, a low voltage of about 100 volt is being used uh, for the external source when you have an external, external source of uh, light illuminator. Then below that you have a condenser lens. And now what is a condenser lens? These are lenses which we use to collect and focus the light from the illuminator into the specimen. You know that light uh, usually what it moves in all directions so the function of the condenser is to collect and focus the light on the illuminate of uh, on the specimen of the object when it is coming from the illuminator and so we have the condenser lens which condenses uh, which is being present below and it uh, below the specimen and it collects and focuses the light from the illuminator in the specimen so these are, uh, you can also see that sometimes they might have a diaphragm, okay. Now what is uh, the diaphragm? The diaphragm is to also maintain or to focus or the adjust the light which has been coming onto the particular specimen and it has also been found uh, below the microscope. So the diaphragm is also known as the diaph iris. It has been found under the stage of the microscope and it controls the amount of light that reaches this particular specimen. And you also have other parts like called the condenser focus knob where the knob, you can move the condenser up or down, this controlling the focus light onto the specimen. And in some advanced microscopes, you also have an Abbe condenser. It is specially designed, uh, it has been found and uh, it has been found in specially designed high quality microscopes which makes the condenser to be movable and allows very high magnification of about 400x. Then you also have a rack stop. It controls how far the stages should go, preventing the objective lens from getting too close to the specimen slide which may damage the specimen. Now what about the magnification? You have now to, uh, when you go to consider a compound microscope, the magnification is, the total magnification is the uh, combined magnification of the different lenses. Now, if you have an objective lens of about 20x and an ocular lens of 10x, then the total magnification becomes 200x. So, I guess you got an idea about the parts of the microscope. Uh, these are the different, this is a microscope and the different parts depicted. In the next session, uh, we will be continuing with the types of microscopy. Thank you for now.